Hello, I'm Eric Meyer. I'm a developer advocate at Agalia. And I am Brian Cardell, also a developer advocate at Agalia. And uh, today we're going to chat about a new thing in the web, a new service called Baseline. Have you have you looked at this much, Brian? I have looked at a, a bit. I mean, uh, I know where it comes from. So Baseline is essentially a way of letting you look at, uh, let's say, information about a web API, and it will tell you whether that thing is widely supported or not widely supported or not supported at all, I guess, in some cases. And the way they're defining widely supported is that it's supported in three major browser engines for at least the last two major release versions. So, which is a little complicated, but like, so if something's been supported in Chromium since version 79 and Gecko since version 79, and then WebKit added it two release versions ago, like two major release versions ago, then it's counted as widely supported. Or, you know, if WebKit has supported it since 2016 and um, Chromium has supported it for the last three releases and, and Gecko has released, has added it uh, two releases ago, then that would also be widely supported. Um, and yeah, so if you go to the to MDN, uh, Mozilla Developers Network, and you land on uh, a property like um, Margin Top, <laughs> it's going to tell you if that's widely supported. I really hope that Margin Top is widely supported, um, but then it might for things like uh, new color, new color uh, formats, it might have different information. So yeah, I mean, that's what baseline is, is meant to do is to give people to like to give developers a more uh, coarse grained idea of, Hey, can I use this thing right now or not? Yeah. I like what this is doing. Um, I think it's one of these things that there's a slow trend toward realizing that we need effectively this. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, like in 2019, uh, Egalia was there's a effort spearheaded by Little Dan, uh, Dan Ehrenberg, mm. um, who was who, at, then at Egalia. He was then at Egalia, right? Who he went to Bloomberg uh, since then after the pandemic. So it was to bring together different groups, like different interest groups about JavaScript. Who you know, some people are in involved because they make frameworks and some people make tools and, you know, we want to get together and talk with them and help review and shape what's developing in, in standards so that it like takes all those things into account. And, um, there was one that was set up for edu educators and we had a lot of trouble. Like, what do you want this group to do? Because, um, you know, the obvious thing is like documentation and education right mm -hmm. we could give talks we could write mdn we could like there's so many things that seem obvious but a kind of non-obvious observation that we had is that boy there's a lot of it already um and it starts at a like at a very early stage like we start talking about things sometimes years before anybody can really use them in good conscience you know what i mean yeah um yeah because, we had that we've had that problem with a few technologies over the years flux yeah Bot, absolutely absolutely and, yeah. and so we had this idea um i i wrote a piece about this um it's on my blog called two minute standards and we had mm -hmm. a a twitter account that we would post um no more than 500 words or a two minute video <laughs> Right. Like it had to be basically the equivalent of the evening news. Just like, mm, yeah. this is not going to be deep. Right. It's not going to be deep. Right. But it's going to tell you the things that you really should know, you know, like. Right. Yeah. Right. For the, for the younger viewers in our, yeah. So for the younger viewers in our audience who, who may not have ever experienced this, it used to be that like, there was there was national there was local news at six o'clock in the evening in your local time zone and then national news at six thirty. And the national news would come from one of the three 
major networks like ABC, NBC, CBS, and the news anchor would for half an hour give you little bite-sized summaries um, of like what the top news stories were, sort of like hitting up the homepage of a news site today and sort of glancing through the, the headlines and everything. Anyway, it's, you know, and people actually used to like schedule their evenings around it because that was how they caught up with the news was you know, with what was going on that day it was by watching a half hour program that would cover, I don't know, eight to 10 stories in that time with commercial breaks. So anyway, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think today we have a lot of things that like to go deeper on things. And that, yeah. that's I, I like that as well. But mm -hmm. there's like, you know, you need sort of two different things. And I, I like what I think that some of this came out in conversations with like the WebDX group as well. Like that there's a, a real need here. And you and I actually have been having a lot of conversations about this Um and well, I wrote a piece about that too, called like the, the cool tool you didn't know existed or something like that. Um, and mm. it, it's just about like, hey, did you know that you can act like not by design, but almost by accident, you can subscribe to uh, BCD updates. So like once or twice a week, you get a little summary in your RSS feed of like, you know, a, a a pretty condensed version of everything that happened, but it's also too noisy because like when things are experimental, they go in there, you know, um, because we're yeah. trying to make it not experimental, <laughs> um, to make it, to get it past that point, you have to do a whole bunch of stuff and it, it takes a long time. Yeah. I, I just see a lot of, a lot of convergence of, of ideas here. I know also, do you remember there was a, conversation in CSS working group. I think Jen Simmons maybe started it. I could be wrong about that, but uh, like, let's do CSS four. Vaguely. <laughs> the idea here is that um, we gained a lot by modularizing and moving to like evergreen. And, mm. but the one thing that we've made it really, really hard to do is for people to keep up and say, this year, I'm going to make a point of learning these things and making sure that like I am, am fluent with them. And um, now it's just sort of like things come at you like a, a million miles a minute through social media. You'll see yeah. five presentations in a single week about a thing that isn't a thing yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And each one wants an hour of your time, you know, so right. it's just really, really hard to know when, like, when is it really time to pay attention? And that has a side effect of like a little bit like the boy who cried wolf, right? Like, mm. like we missed the moment when it arrives, you know? Right. So I like what Rachel has been doing. I think it's been inspired by all these things like the CSS4, HTML6 um, ideas of, like about how we could sort of like put a bow on it and say, this is what it means. It's not really a new version of the standard or anything, but it's sort of like, like we do with like, ECMA 2016, ECMA 2017, right? Mm -hmm. You can say, this is what is in that. Um, mm, okay, yeah. And, and the CSS Working Group occasionally does that. They used to do it yearly. They would do a CSS snapshot. But I think they've been working on one recently. Like, that, that was part of the conversation in that thread is, like, a, a number of people pointing that out. I mean, I hate to say it, but we need a marketing term, right? Like, yeah. we need something, yeah. a banner under which this is done, even if that has a relatively boring, like, you know, CSS 2024, you know? Right. But yeah, I really like what, what, what's being done here. Like Rachel, Andrew uh, announced it in, at Google IO. Yeah. At Google IO. And, and from what I understand, uh, she's been working on it. She's been one, at least one of the people working on it for, uh, some time now it's, it's been a while in the, in the works. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of short circuits that or bypasses that whole step of, Oh, this sounds cool. Let me adapt the example in this page to my project and then I'll load it up in the web browser and then it doesn't work. And then they 
you know, you spend however long trying to figure out did I get the syntax wrong? Am I not understanding what kind of elements will accept it? Am I not thinking through this other thing? Is it just the browser that I tested in? Let me open another browser. Like ideally you can skip that whole step with this baseline information. So you can land on an API page and see right away if that, oh gosh, this actually works in all browsers and it has for you know, at least two major versions, which I thought was that. What do you think about that last two major versions cut off for marking something as being supported? Get, anything we choose here is going to be arbitrary. I think one of the things that you get from the two major versions thing is like, first you miss the bugs that are inevitably probably in the first one. Mm. But, but second, there are like, a non-small number of browsers as well that are built off of like Chrome, especially. Um, and okay. they sometimes can lag, right? So yeah, um, it probably increases your likelihood that it's going to be also in, you know, uh, downstream browsers, if you say two versions. Um, hmm. also okay. not everybody gets the version at the same time. So there is a, like, even though we say like, Oh, today Chrome one Oh nine. Right. Um, well the world is a big place and there are like a few billion people <laughs> who are getting Chrome, you know? So right. when will they get it can depend on all kinds of things, including even like many of them say, hey, we have an update, click here to restart. And like, do you? Also in the things that can delay is internets yeah. where your corporate IT lags you on that. Um, right. Which is actually a lot of internet traffic and, and you know, intranet work. So um, I, I can tell you, I, I worked for a company before I came here for a long time that had you know, controlled tech IT policies and, and like would delay your rollout. And it would be very, very confusing mm. if you weren't aware of that because you would say, gee, but like the latest version is this and I can't, <laughs> it tells me there's no update available, you know? So I think that the two mm -hmm. major versions is like just guaranteeing that you're not going to get a lot of weird false like this should be supported and I can't understand why it's not working for this small fraction of my users, you know? Right. So I, I think it's, I think it's a good one. I think that the baseline itself is going to move slow. I mean, when they talked about in, in there's a web dev piece about this and there's also uh, her like talk introducing it. It's short 15 minutes, I think. Uh -huh. Um, by the way, did you watch it? I have not seen all of it. Uh, she mentions Zigalia. Oh, nice. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. Um, basically, she says, uh, like, what what is this about? You know, like, what are what are we trying to do with it? And, like, what are our roles and responsibilities? And she says that, you know, Google is interested in doing this and this and this. And also, like, working with Zigalia, if... Other engines are happy to include them, but for whatever reason, can't find the resources to bring up the baseline. And they're talking right. about also like announcing what will be in the baseline. So mm -hmm. um, thinking about it kind of like it, it is actually, as, as she explained, like related also to interop, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So like there will That's be true. interop 2023 and there will be like baseline 2024. And these are like just nice, simple to grok things we can work on together and understand the same way together. And it, I think some people will think it's a little too slow, but mm. that's some people that is really, really important to remember because like you might hear, you might hear development discussion for sometimes years before there's any implementations, right? And then long lag. And then once it's real, like nobody knows about it. 
right? Like it will go into all of our release notes and the moment will be missed for the vast majority of people because there's just so much noise. And so like a number of people will only discover this maybe years from now. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. At least currently that's the case. And that that's kind of one of the things I believe that baseline is intended to help because while it might feel slow to you, like, if we tell everybody, if we spend a year saying this is this this is baseline twenty twenty three, more people will get it and like be able to focus and learn it and push it out into the world in real life mm, faster. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. But like a good example of this is like Grid and and Flexbox, right? Like it, it's hard to imagine for me a site that you would make that wouldn't involve Grid and or Flexbox, right? Like yeah. They're, they they do seem kind of essential these days. And, and yet, like, it it's not even most websites, I don't think. No. Yeah. So, like, it takes a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it certainly can. And, I mean, that's understandable, right? Uh, developers a lot um, have have a long experience of hear about cool thing you know, wherever they hear about it, you know, CSS tricks or smashing magazine or Twitter or Mastodon or whatever, and go try it out and discover that it doesn't work as, you know, fully or as cleanly or as widely as they would like. And then just sort of file it in the, Oh, that was a cool idea, but it doesn't work right now. I'll check back in five years bin of their head. And, you know, maybe they do, maybe they don't check back in a few years because that's, you know, that's sort of been the, that's been the experience, right? This, oh, cool new CSS thing that just landed in uh, Safari, right? I was like, oh, cool. Let me go check that out. Okay. And now I want to see it in the other browsers. Oh, it doesn't work there because only Safari, uh, you know, or Firefox or, you know, which, whoever was first. Uh, an example that's co immediately coming to my mind because I was just dealing with, uh, a design the other day where I really wanted this is the WebKit uh, has supported the hanging punctuation CSS property since 2016. They're the only one. And I'm, we don't have to get into the details of what it does. It just, it helps text line up more nicely, right? Um, if there's, if there are lines of text that start with punctuation, but at any rate, right. That's been it's 2020, it's seven years that it's been available and working and improving web web rendering in uh, in WebKit browsers and Safari, you know, and, and other WebKit browsers. And it's not present in Chromium or Gecko. And so there's this bit set in the back of my head when it comes to hanging punctuation. That's the, oh, this is, you know, it's. I can do this, but I have to remember that it only works in one of the three bra main browser engines. And, you know, hopefully someday maybe it will become more widely supported. And so for something like hanging punctuation, that's not a big deal. But if it were something, you know, like grid, <laughs> right? If grid had been like that and Flexbox kind of was like that for, for a while, right? Where it was like, yes, oh, yeah. I can use this in this browser. But the thing that I did, is rendered completely differently in other browsers and it and it took a few years for that to get worked out and so people have this idea in their head of oh yeah cool thing but i need to check back in later to see if it's actually widely supported um and ideally yeah i mean hopefully baseline will keep people from having to keep doing that right <laughs> like sort of set a mental note for themselves to to check back or Unfortunately, I think more often it's like, oh yeah, cool idea, but it doesn't work. And they just immediately file it under does not work and never update that knowledge. Yeah. That like, I think that that is really the case historically with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, you can look at grid. So grid did not have that problem, right? Like grid yeah. came out kind of everywhere at the same time. Yeah. Within the space of a month, effectively. It was not super buggy, right? Like, right. And so, like, it had kind of every advantage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and it's, like, the kind of thing that everyone needs all the time. 
there are other things that are not like that. Like, it, like just for example, um, if you work in an enterprise, for example, you're dealing with forms all the time, but there are mm. tons and tons and tons of websites you'll build where you won't use forms at all. Right. Yeah. True. Um, and so, you know, we get some new feature in forms, maybe you need it, you know, the, maybe a huge segment of the population only needs it once every year or two, you know? Um, mm. So basically <laughs> that's the only time you're thinking about that. You don't need it right now. Um, you try something, you learn that it doesn't work. You probably just like learn a way to work around it. And it might be one or two or three cycles before you see somebody give a talk where they're doing something with forms that you tried and you're like, yeah, but that doesn't work. Oh, wait, no, it does work now. Right. You know? And it's like, I wish that you could just make everybody instantly informed. Right. I mean, this happens to me too. Like, I don't want to like be like, why can't everybody keep up? I can't keep up. Like this is, yeah. I'm making these complaints from my own perspective. Like it's really hard to keep up with all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seriously. Even until maybe 2018 or 2019, I was giving talks and I would have somebody come up to me and be like, wow, we're doing so much in the web platform now. Like the, this query selector thing is amazing. I'm like, wow, that has been in the platform for kind of a long time now, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, it, it like, it shakes you out of your, like what you think the norm is when you go and, and talk to a lot of people, you know, cause like. There's a huge, huge variety of what people know and what they use. And, you know, plenty of people still just out there using jQuery. Yeah, right. Which, you know, nothing against jQuery. It's pretty cool. And it works for them, right? Yeah. But, yeah, it's it. sometimes it's nice to know, oh, hey, that, you know, the thing that I'm still using jQuery for, that's now natively supported and I don't have to load an entire library in order to get this thing that I need. Um, I, yeah. I mean, similarly, there was a, there was that period when it came to grid where people were saying, you know, Hey, you don't have to use X layout framework anymore. You can just do it in grid. And, but you know, how do you notify the entire web community of that? You really, right. you can't. There's, there, there is, like you say, there is no evening news that everybody tunes into. Right. Yeah. Or weekly news or monthly news or whatever news, you know, um, which is interesting. I mean, you would think that there would be some like widely viewed YouTube channel and somebody would just do that, but there really isn't. Um, and yeah. I'm, I'm not about to volunteer, which maybe is a symptom of why there is no such thing. Cause that takes a lot of effort to produce. Well, I think Rachel and her team are a little bit doing this now with the web dot dev they do a thing mm. where it is basically like the evening news but the only thing is like sometimes it does contain like these things are experimental and stuff too right um which means like it's a little bit harder for you to just like tune in and separate the the hopes and ambitions from the cold hard reality mm. of what you can currently use yeah but i think they're doing a great job over there actually with that um that is, if you don't subscribe to that, it's a great thing. Yeah. But yeah. I think that this has been like growing as an idea that like, boy, there's just a lot to keep up with and keep separate. And we really need some way to do, like you say, like put in the brains of everybody, like, Hey, these are important things that like happened are happening this year. And like, this, these are the things to, you should know. There might also be plenty of other things you also think you should know. That's fine. But like these ones are kind of like they're new landing and, and interoperable, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was talking earlier about this information showing up at M on MDN, I think I might've left the impression mistakenly that this is on every single page on MDN and it, it's not. Um, that may be the, the eventual outcome, but as we are having this conversation, as an example, if you go to uh, like scroll margin top, 
there's no baseline information for that on MDN. But if you go to the pages for the various grid properties, there is a little baseline banner, like literally the page title grid and right below it, baseline, widely supported in this particular case. And, you know, if you do that, that's for the grid property. If you do the grid area property or the grid row property or the grid row start property, or like any of those, um, and uh, those property pages, you'll get a little baseline banner right at the top of the page. And then at the bottom, you still have that support table that is on every page of MDN or nearly every page of MDN. Um, so uh, same thing for the, all the flex properties, they have the baseline information. So it is, it is limited at this time um, in terms of what parts of MDN it's on, but um, it is, uh, you can you could go today and see uh, what the what the what the experience is is and and sort of what it what it does for you. Um, I do hope that uh, this gets onto all the pages sooner um, rather than later, because yeah, there will be those those use cases where someone might say, "Well, okay, it's not widely supported, but it's supported for my use case." One of the things about baseline as it stands right now is it does not make the fact that it's two major release versions ago clear in that little banner, right? So somebody who's right. familiar with what the baseline project is and how it's structured just like knows that. But somebody who just lands on an MDM page, never having heard of baseline and sees a little banner, it's like, oh, wow. But it doesn't say, you know, at least the last two versions or since October, 2021 or anything like that. I mean, maybe well in the future, you know, this is, this is not necessarily a, a done project that is uh, carved sure. in stone. It's absolutely, I think there are plans for figuring out, you know, how, do, how is it received as it is now? How could it be improved? Like what needs to be changed? Like all that stuff will be figured out, but it would be, I feel like it would be nice if it could say widely supported since blah. Yeah, right. That would make that would actually make a lot of sense. We should file that as an issue. But yeah, it's it's nice to see this this sort of this maturity, right, of information about the platform and about figuring out what it is that developers need and it would be nice to see more and more things like this sort of more context for the information that's available. I think, I think that's what I'm trying to get at here is that trying to having the, the information, right? Like having a, a reference page is nice, right? And having it explained to you how the thing works is great, but giving you a context for, you know, is this thing usable or um, is this thing widespread or is it still being worked on? All that sort of stuff. That's mostly been missing. And uh, this yeah, baseline does seem like a really significant step forward in providing more useful context to like all of the raw information that we have available. So yeah, the two, the two major versions thing um, is a way it's an arbitrary way. Right. Um, it's imperfect in other ways. There are, actually a number of issues already filed against uh like what should be in baseline mm -hmm. and how it should work you know like shouldn't you track safari minor versions because like they do minor versions you know like google and mozilla they're on like you know release 1000 yeah. <laughs> um and you know safari's still in the fairly low double digits. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it used to be that it made sense to track WebKit major versions because that was minor versions used to be basically only security fixes. Um, but that has changed recently. Um, thanks to the WebKit team, minor versions now have a whole lot of stuff that comes in them and uh, a whole lot of web features. Yeah, there. I mean, there are other questions that are open there on the topic too, because, like we said, it's just it's arbitrary. You need yeah. some arbitrary thing to really even give people a way to bring all the complaints and criticisms and ideas together. So, like, 
It is a coarse grain, but pretty good, rather simple to articulate way to do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but other things track like real usage stats, like can I use has the thing in the upper right hand corner that's like this represents 98.2% of browsers worldwide or mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. You've seen yep. that, right? Yep. So, you know, some people think like that's a much more relevant kind of thing. That gets tricky because honestly, there is not really a way to measure that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, because that's all just like self-reported in UA strings. And you know how much we lie about UA strings yeah. and how yeah. easy it is to get confused about them. And basically, you know, like the thing that we tell everybody don't do, that is what we're relying on <laughs> for this data, you know? All right. Like, it's very, very hard to know, like, what is actually the share of Samsung Internet out there? We don't really have a way to know that. We have some approximations that are basically based on the UA string. Yeah. Except that sometimes if Samsung Internet were to tell you the truth, you would cause it to break. So even sometimes Samsung Internet is like, just kidding, I'm grown. <laughs> the list of sites to lie to is not infinitely big. I mean, okay. Like it has to fair, be fair enough. It has to be enough people would have to complain. A browser wouldn't tell a lie if they could reach out and get you to update it. And like, if you wanted to update my website or your website, that would be relatively easy, right? Like they would just send us an email and we'd be like, oh crap, let me fix that right away. Yeah. But when it comes to like, you know, Wells Fargo or Yahoo or, <laughs> you know, some big site mm -hmm. with, you know, yeah. Lots and lots and lots of people who go there. CNN.com. CNN.com, right. And like, can we actually reach them? Can we get them to change it? Um, even worse for ones that are like under the covers, they're the same, but you don't know. Like uh, they resell effectively. Like it's a website's mm, package. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And it gets very, very hard to know who to reach. Yeah. Um, they're unresponsive because, um, you know, they've sort of outsourced their website, really. Mm -hmm. So there's not always a person you can reach out to. Yeah. But in the meantime, everybody's going to complain. So they'll lie. And those are the sites, really, that were they're get they're, those sites are going to be included every time. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the things that we estimate usage on are estimated from looking at the HTTP requests to lots and lots and lots of websites and then it's sort of it's extrapolated from there mm, right but the set of websites is which ones are popularly loaded and you know right like in the grand scheme of things our websites are not you know destinations no not really they're destinations for the right people <laughs> sure that's what i'm saying right yeah but they're not you know like all of your everybody on your street doesn't go to that right, right? everybody on your street might go to CNN or CNN, or, right? Exactly. Yeah, or yeah. Uh, or uh, next door. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, yeah, so I think this is really positive. I, I'm really looking forward to see what happens with this. Um, the chapter that I wrote last year for the Web Almanac was specifically stated that it it was kind of trying to do this, right? Like it mm -hmm. was trying to say, look. If you read one thing every year, make it this chapter because we'll tell you what became really interoperable this year. Right. Yeah. And if you just pay attention to those things, you are going to get a lot out of that. And, and it will protect you from exactly the kind of things that we talked about before where it was like, oh, I tried that and, you know, five years ago and it, it didn't work. How am I supposed to know when it got fixed? Th this chapter will tell you, right? The same same thing with this baseline. It, I think it's just a really, really good idea. I'm really, really pleased to see it. I'm glad that Google suggested it in the WebDX group. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that, you know, we picked it up and ran with it. Yeah, like I say, hopefully it's a first step uh, into a larger world, as Obi-Wan Kenobi once said. Congratulations to everyone who worked on it. Um, Definitely. And uh, looking forward to seeing what... Happens in the future. Me too.